Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we've got a puzzle that has been recommended to us. It's been requested uh, several times over the last few days. Um, it's by Zetamath, or you might say Zetamath, and it's called Ouroboros. And I am delighted to tell you it is apparently a snake puzzle. Um, and yeah, I like snake puzzles and I've, well, I've been told that a number of you have been having a lot of difficulties with your snake touching recently. And I'm here to remind you about all the rules regarding that subject. Um, now, before I get into that, there are a few things to mention. Uh, I have a great hope at the moment that in the coming weeks, we will be in a position to release a, a weekly bonus video from a world-class setter on how they how they perform the process, how they strut their stuff. So this week's video, of course, which we released on Monday was by Demono. Um, I have next week's video ready and waiting to go. And I have several videos that are promised by other world-class constructors. So it, it really is a fantastic time for the world Sudoku scene at the moment. And if you, if you want to learn how these setters do this magic, then I think the next few weeks are going to be exciting times. Um, other than that, just to mention, of course, over on Patreon, we have this extraordinary, extraordinary puzzle hunt by Matthias Martinka. Um, in many of the puzzles in that hunt have been described by some of the people who have solved the hunt as, you know, their favourite puzzle ever. Um, uh, so, you know, it, it's it's frankly, uh, it's just brilliant. It's just brilliant. So do have a go at it. It's over on Patreon right now and anyone who solves it will get a shout out on the channel. Now, that all said, what are the rules of this one? Let me read them to you. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells must be shaded to form a, sing oh, a single closed loop. Ah, so it's a snake puzzle, but it's a looped snake. Ah, I didn't realize this. Cells must be shaded to form a single closed loop that is one cell wide. The loop may not touch itself, even diagonally. Um, within each cage, the sum of the shaded cells and the sum of the unshaded cells is equal. Hang on, what does that mean? Within each cage, the sum of the shaded cells and the sum of the unshaded cells is equal. So, right, that's a very interesting constraint. So that's saying within every cage in this puzzle, if we, if we worked out those three squares were unshaded, and these two squares were shaded, then the sum of those two would have to equal the sum of those three. I think that's what that means. Um, digits must not repeat within a cage. The circles contain the number of adjacent cells that are part of the loop. This number includes the cell itself, the orthogonally adjacent squares and the diagonally adjacent squares and not all circles are given. Good grief. Right. So I think what that's saying is that the circles operate a bit like minesweeper cells. So this circle's total, let's imagine it was a, I don't know, a seven. That would be saying that seven of those nine cells had to be shaded which is, I was about to say, which is impossible, but it's not impossible, actually. So this, okay, so this, the yeah, these, these basically are like minesweeper cells. So let's think about that square. That square is counting those four squares and telling us how many of those four squares are shaded, i.e. a part of the loop or, you know, part of the snake that's eaten its tail. So do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. This is meant to be an absolutely brilliant puzzle. So it's this should be a lot of fun. And the place I will start with is, do I start with the corners? They are tempting me. I am going to start by... Filling in that cell, not with a digit, but I know that square is one or three. Um, now, how do I know this square is one or three? Well, it's because, and the poor lady that we introduced you to yesterday, I really wish that she'd known this. It's because I happen to know a secret and the secret concerns the sum of all the digits in a box of a Sudoku. Now, if you add up, if we had the correct solution to this puzzle, we added up those nine cells, we would get 45 because we would be adding the numbers one to nine once each. So if I know that this box adds to 45, 
we can perform some parity logic here because the rules tell us that in each cage the sum of the shaded and the sum of the unshaded cells is equal. So the sum of the, let's think about that sort of algebraically, the sum of the unshaded cells, let's make that x, the sum of the shaded cells will then be x as well. So this sums to 2x, this sums to 2x. In other words, those eight cells together add up to an even number. And if they add up to an even number, but the total for the whole box is an odd number, this square is an odd number, and we know it can't be five, seven, or nine because it doesn't see enough squares. So that's how I got that that was a one or a three. Um, I'm not sure if that's helpful, but that's what I was doing. Now, if this was a one, that would be saying one shaded cell. So the only way you could have one shaded cell, I think, is if this cell is the shaded cell. So the snake would have to um, I'm going to call it a snake because I find it more amusing than calling it a loop. The snake would have to um, do that, I think, because if it, for example, tried to take this square, there's no way it could take this square without also taking this square because there is no snake end here. It's a snake loop. Um, and that, of course, would make this one impossible. So one, I think, is possible if it does that. I can't see why that's not possible. If this is three, on the other hand, that's saying that three of these four cells is a snake, which must be either that or that, I think. It's quite interesting, actually. If it is a three, I think you always end up having to take those cells. Um, but I can't see how we can determine which of those is true. So I think this is, this is all a very long-winded way of talking you through a red herring. Let us look somewhere else. We can do the same logic on the middle box, of course. That square's got to be um, odd as well, because we know those, those that cage must add to an even number. So that's got to be odd. Uh, now, unfortunately, though, we can't do what we did here because this can be 1, 3, 5, 7 or 9, although I doubt it can be 9 because a 9, <laughs> nine would be a very odd looking snake. It would be a snake that did this, 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 this and this, and it would touch itself all over the place and be a filthy snake. So let's not have a filthy snake in the middle. Um, this one. Ah, right, I can rule one out from the middle. Because if this is one, how on earth would we shade just one cell? Well, we could have something like that with this cell shaded. But if that cell was shaded, the rest of the cage would have to be unshaded to make the one work. And that, and then the other rule, which is saying that the sum of the shaded and the unshaded cells has to be equal within a cage, would be utterly broken. Because the minimum I could make those seven cells add up to is 28 with one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I can't put 28 in that cell however much I might want to. So that's all complete bobbins and we can delete it all and get rid of the one from there. And this is three, five or seven. Now, can we keep going with this? Is seven possible? Let's just have a think. If that's seven, we have to go. If it's, yeah, okay, if it's seven, the snake can't come into the central cell. Now, the reason for that is a bit tricky, but it's not too hard to do. We have to think about snake logic. So, as the snake comes in here and reaches this square, how many of the exit cells for the snake now, so say it's come in this way and it's hit this square, how many of those squares can be snake? Well, the answer is one, because if two of them are snake, the snake has branched. Uh, and that's almost as bad as it's as it touching itself. So exactly two of these squares would then have to not be in the snake. But now, now, now we're basically broken because as soon as the snake turns, you can see that the, the entirety of the rest of this box now has to be shaded in order to, make, order to make the seven count work, including that square there. And that square will force the snake to touch itself. This square then creates a whole melee of problems. So seven we can rule out as well. And maybe this is how we start the puzzle. We can whittle this down. So if this is five, 
if this is five. Um, I don't see what to do with that. What about if it's three? I don't see what to do with that either. Oh dear. Okay, so this <laughs> this is another red herring. This isn't good, is it? That's a red herring. This is a red herring. Even though they look like they're going to be the interesting places to start because of the geometry of the cages. Sorry. Right. Okay, let us move on um, to... I suppose the corners now is that where we're meant to look let's have a look at the other corners let's have a look at this square so this square has to be one two three or four it can't be four you can never shade all of those squares in uh, you've got to avoid the naughty snake again so one two or three if it's one it does this um, If it's one, it does this. Does that mean, is that impossible for some reason? It's not immediately obvious to me how that's impossible. It might be impossible, I just can't see how. If it's two, if it's two, it can never take the corner cell. That's quite an interesting point. Look, if it's two, if it takes the corner, it would have to take both of those squares because it's a loop and not a snake with, with an end. And that, of course, would make this square have to be a three. So if it's two, it doesn't take the corner. And it would take either those two squares or those two squares because it couldn't take those two squares because then that's creating a loop again. And not a loop, it's creating a snake with ends. Um, and if this is three, oh, we've already looked at that. If this is three, we have to do something like this or like that. Ah, hang on, hang on a minute. Ah, that's, I've got a deduction here. Right, three is not possible in there, and that's because of the cage. Because if this is three, there's two possible ways that the snake can move. It either comes in like this and it exits. That would, that would give this circle a count of three. But look, I've now shaded all of that cage. And that breaks the rule that the unshaded cells in a cage have to equal the shaded cells, or the sum of those two things have to be equal. Now, if on the other hand I do this, this is still broken, because now this is unshaded, but there are three shaded cells that would have to sum up to three, and what you cannot do is put one into all of them, because that will not be correct. So this, oh, whoopsie. Um, so that square is not three and is one or two. Um, now, maybe I have to think about this more carefully then. Is there a reason? See, it feels to me like one is more likely to be broken. If one is, if one goes like that, you couldn't shade, so you'd have to go like this. Um. sure might be broken I'm not I'm just not I'm not seeing it immediately and for that apologies if you are um, let us keep going we've got a given digit actually this is a this is a pleasure that isn't often afforded to us um, so maybe this is maybe this is this is the correct place to start because we're meant to use some sort of restraint that's placed on this box by the given digit so again this is one two or three same is true of that square, of course. One, two, or three here. Now, is the same... I can see this can't be three doing that. Can it be... Ah, it's the same logic. Okay, three is ruled out of here because the only way of the three working is either with a W pentomino like this, in which case this cage is far too full of digits. These three... These four, sorry, shaded cells could not possibly equal this single small digit. The other way three would work would be like that and the entirety of the cage would be shaded. So this is not three, which does give us a one, two pair in row nine. Now is that telling me something? That's telling me that. Um, 
Hmm. It's telling me it's not possible for those three digits to all be the same. Or all, if all of these are either snake or not snake, this cage is broken because the minimum I could make those three squares add up to is 12 and I can't put 12 into that square. So this must contain a mixture of colors. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm not doing very well here at all. Um, maybe we can, if this is one, it does this. Then, then I would need to be very careful with this cage. Yeah, it's quite interesting, this cage. You can't you can't divide this cage. It's a five cell cage. So you can't divide it into four of one parity, you know, four unshaded and one shaded, because the minimum the four unshaded would add up to, or the four shaded would be one plus two plus three plus four, which is 10, which you cannot make put into the other cell. So this cage must be divided into two cells of one color and three cells of the other. Now that's interesting if this is a one, because then you have to do that, because you've got to pick up two cells. Now is that, I'm not sure if that's okay or not. This is really challenging actually. This really is difficult. If this is two, we know that the two is either like this or like this. So we have to, I don't see what's wrong with that. It would have to do something like that again, which is probably okay, isn't it? Or something like that, which again looks okay. Is there a restriction on this one? This would be so ironic if it's literally the last corner I come to, which is the one that gives away the game. Um, hmm. I don't think this one is nearly as restricted as the other ones we've looked at. Uh, this cage here doesn't seem terribly helpful. So, oh dear, sorry. Um, where, surely, surely it's not these, is it? Let's have a look at this one again. This one, if this is a one, I sort of like the look of that because it's it's going to force something in this cage. In fact, it forces the shape exactly of the snake. It has to be a W like that. And the reason, of course, for that, let's just take a look at this, is if it, if it, if it does go like this, you can't have this shaded because then the entirety of this tetromino would be shaded. So you have to you can't touch yourself, so you can't go here. So you have to go here, and then you can't go down and touch yourself. So this shape would be forced. Um, oh, now, right, okay. I've now spotted something else, which I didn't spot before, which was a bit silly of me. But what do those three, if this was correct, if this was a one, what do those three squares have to contain? Well, they have to contain two, three, and four. And the reason for that is that whatever these three squares sum to has to be equal to whatever I put in this square. Now, given one is not available for these three squares, if I don't put two, three, four in here, this square would have to be a double digit number, which is impossible. So this would have to be two, three, four. This would have to be nine. And the puzzle's broken. Oh, that's it. Right, got it. Okay, I've got to. I've got to start. That was not easy to see. This is not one, and it's not one because of the effect of a two, three, four in here on those two squares. These three squares, because because this is the shape of the putative stake. The, these squares are un, unshaded. So what are we going to put into those two positions? The minimum we can put in is a five and a six. But that means these three squares together are adding up to 12 at least. And I cannot put 12 in this square, however much I might want to. So this is all absolute nonsense, except that it means that these squares, this square here has going to have to be not a one. That must be a two. So this is a one. 
Therefore, that's not a one. Now, probably we have to look over here now because because this is going to be far more constrained by the snake shape than this one is. Let's just have a pause though and see if we can work out whether that's true. So we've got, this is either doing this or it's doing that. So if it does that, it has to take this square. If it does that, we don't know if it takes this square. And I don't know that I can use this. I do ah I do know what I one thing I can do though I can say it doesn't take that square for certain so it's this square has become not snake and it must always take this square because whether it's this domino or this domino that's always that square so we have we have identified our first definite piece of snake this square here well done um it's only taken me 20 minutes good grief uh right Come on, Simon, speed up. Um, now this square, right, so this square is a one. It's clearly not snake, therefore. So this square is the snake. The snake is gonna have to do this. This square, therefore, is not snake because we don't like the snake to touch itself. Those two squares are not snake. And yes, and now I can use this logic that I'd spotted before about the, this L pentomino here. It's not possible for the snake to just nip in and pick one of these squares because the other four squares will add up to a two digit number. So the snake must take both of those squares and that's beautiful because the snake then has to come out like that, which gives us more real estate that's not snake because we know our snake mustn't touch itself. Um, you can't have a two by two area of green. So no, just joking, that was yesterday. Um, those two squares therefore have got to be snakes. We know the snakes are loop. And we reach this position, which is a lot better than we were doing. And we can, oh, now this square must be restricted. Hang on, because we now know this sees three, possibly four cells maximum. So this is a three or a four. Ah, oh, this is beautiful actually. This is absolutely beautiful, this little shape here. Let's have a look at this because we actually know how it's divided. Look, we've got five green squares in it and only two purple squares. And we know that the sum of the five greens must equal the sum of the two purples. So what's the minimum I can make those five squares add up to, given they're all in a cage and therefore can't, cannot repeat a digit? One plus two plus three plus four plus five. Now, if that was a question on millionaire, we would be good to go. That adds up to 15. So that means that these two squares have to add up to a minimum of 15. Well, how could they add up to more than 15? The answer is they couldn't possibly because there's a nine because of this given nine. If that's 16 or 17, you need a nine to make that total in two squares. So these squares do add up to 15 and they are one, two, three, four, and five. Let me get to the right bit. That's got to be like that. Two, three, four, and five. Therefore, these two squares are seven and eight, which might be important. Um, Uh, can I tell how that divides the world? I don't know that I can actually. I think this is a puzzle where you could miss just buckets of logic as you're going along. And if I am doing that, I'm really sorry. I'm not trying to. Um, okay, now I'm not I'm going to ignore this because I can't see how to use it. What I'm going to do instead is to look, look at this. So the snake is poking out into this L tetromino. Now, if the snake took this square, we've already thought about this, that the minimum those three squares could add up to would be 12 with three, four, and five. I cannot put 12 in here. So the snake can never take this square and therefore the snake must turn. And if the snake turns, it must take this square. Sorry, it must mean this square is not snake. 
Oh, this is gorgeous. This is really clever setting. Now, now look. Now this domino is unaccessible to snake. Because if the snake tries to take either of these squares, you know what's going to happen. It'll dip in, and as it turns, it will be a naughty snake right there. Right there is where the naughtiness is occurring. Don't let your snake be naughty. So this cannot come down here. That's got to be green. This must be the way that the two completes. We now have a little bend in the snake there. Fill in that to avoid it touching itself. Fill in those to have, uh, extend the snake. Um, stare at it for a while and then wonder what to do next. So this square. Oh, I was about to say something that would have been wrong. I was about to sort of conclude this couldn't be snake because it would create too much real estate in snakes in this tetromino, but that's wrong, look, because three plus four here, and if I put one there, this could be an eight. You rotter. Okay, that's no good. Right, so we've got to think of something else. Um, ah, right, okay, something simpler. Look at this row. Look at those two squares. They cannot equal one. So the minimum these three squares can sum to is nine and the maximum they can sum to is nine because I can't put 10 in there. So that's a three, four pair. This is a nine. So nine is in this domino in box eight. And, and we pause for breath again. Um, so is this telling us what we needed to know? or not. Do I know Do I know enough about this one to conclude much? Um hmm. two. This square here it's seeing two at the moment. But it can't, so it so it can't be one. Is what all I'm thinking there. It's got to be at least five. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, it can't it can't loop. So I think it's got to be five or six. Not sure if I can see which of those is correct. Um, oh dear! Right. Let's put. Let's put five, six in there. So do I really, is it really true to conclude it cannot be seven? I think it is true because the only way I can possibly see it being seven is if it takes those squares and that it will, that will create a loop. So this is five or six. And now, now I'm stuck again. So where on earth do we look next? We shall, we got stuff going on in the bottom row. So the minimum value of those squares is now, ah, yeah, we do, good. Okay, I'm pleased about that because I was, I was getting that daunted feeling of being stuck. But look, I've got one, two, three, and four in the bottom row. So the minimum value of the, this domino is five and six, which is 11. And why is that so important? Well, it's because I can't make 11 in just this square. So there must be another green in this tetromino and therefore that must be green and that looks like it's profound actually because now this must extend and this must extend um, now do we know what that means so so now oh this is huge good grief right so now how could this be six? Oh no, it could be six. Oh, no, it can't, it can't. I was thinking, I was looking at those squares, but actually, and I was forgetting this square, but this square is no longer possible to be snake because if the snake comes that way, it's touching itself at the corner here and it's not allowed to. So in fact, we get another green there and the logic I was thinking about is now okay because if this was a six, the only six cells that you could take are those six and look at this snake 
it's being absolutely ridiculous around there it's touching itself in all sorts so this square must be a five one two three so the snake can't come here now because if it does those two would turn green and this five count would be a four count so this square now must be green one two three and those two must be snake the snake has touched itself so it must continue and create a full piece of snake now all of these squares now have to turn green to avoid snake touchage um, this must extend and suddenly I've got the whole bottom four rows of the grid shaded which is quite a surprise so now that square can't be a five and okay now we've got to look again and see what we can do I don't have very good intuition for how to um, for where to look with this puzzle I have to say I'm not I'm not sure whether I should be looking at snake or Sudoku or you know the sums of these weird cages so what on earth do we look for next um i don't know <laughs> um i suppose ah now this square i now know don't i because this one's now been filled in so this only sees three snake pieces that's quite nice because i can now remove three from the rest of this sort of putative 15 cage that we've got going on ah right now do you want to see a beautiful digit in a sudoku because i've got one for you this is a beautiful digit i'm going to write a five in there now can you see how you can do this this is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so why do i think this is a five well it's using parity again look at this box now those three squares add up to an even number this cage adds up to an even number so using the 45 rule we know this little cell here must be odd well it's not one three seven or nine so it is five that is lovely good grief um okay so that means there's a five down there actually wonder now presumably i can work out how this box divides up i've got two four and six to place into it and i know those three squares have got to equal those two squares right that can't be a six because i can't make those three add up to 15 if that's a six if that's 13 it's still oh, yeah, okay this has to be two that makes those two squares add up to 11 and once we eliminate the two from there these now add up to 11 as well and we are cooking with gas in fact we are because we've got a four along here so this is a four this is a six two is not there anymore four is not here um does that make any difference that's not five i suppose by the same logic just using sudoku that, oh that's not five either so as i see there's only one place five can go in this funny little cage here that is correct it's got to be there okay fine so that means there's a five up there and now we know what these three squares are they are five seven and eight in some order so we might be able to divide this cage up into something useful now so if this is yeah okay so if this is seven and eight those two squares have to add up to 15 which is impossible because we can't use six nine and we can't repeat seven eight so this is not seven eight which means there must be a five in this domino which means there is no five in this cell now right now can this be five seven if this is five seven this has to add up to 12 and it would have to be 8 4 and that 4 would clash so this is not 5 7 it must be 5 8 therefore and that does look like it works if that's 7 and that's 6 so now we might be
doing a little bit better again. We've got, yeah, okay, by Sudoku, I've got to put three here. And by Sudoku, I've got to put two here. So this is no longer two. We've just got one and four left in this funny cage. Three is seeing that cell. That cell's now a five. Oh, this is gorgeous. Look, that's going to give us purples across this middle box. Those are the only five cells it can see. So we're going to get some stuff going on at the top. Let's just continue with the Sudoku down here, though. We've got one, four, nine into these squares just to complete this box. Um, so these squares are one, seven, eight in some order. There's definitely a one in those two cells. Seven, eight. These are six, seven, and eight. There's definitely a six in one of those two squares. So have we learned enough about the world to fill in much else? Presumably this... So this cage either adds up, well, this this domino either adds up to eight or nine. So this domino either adds up to eight or nine. So this can't be an eight because I can't put zero in there. And I can't, oh, I was about to make a mistake. Good grief. I was about, I said this couldn't be eight because I couldn't put zero in there. But of course this could have been a one, but it can't be a one because I'm putting a one in there for sure. So this is not eight. So let's actually do this a bit more carefully. Eight or nine. So this has got to be two or three because I can't put one in it. So that's still actually not good enough. Um, okay, sorry, I don't think we can resolve that. Though it would be nice if it was a three, wouldn't it? Right, let's use more Sudoku. I've got a two here, so that square's a three. That square's become a one. Now, if that's a three, we know it's either this or that. So it's definitely those now have to be purple. Unfortunately, I don't think we get any knowledge about these three squares and whether we can green them or not. That might be wrong. I think if you give it more thought, we might be able to do better than that. But I can't see it straight away. Five, look, has to be in one of those two squares by Sudoku, I've just noticed. Now, this is a one. Now, one has been really good to us in the corners so far, because now we know that that must be green. And we know the snake must do this. And we know this must be green. Now the snake has touched itself. Oh, this is lovely. Right. OK, so now this square cannot be purple. Because then this snake segment is touching two different snake segments and the snake is branching and that's all sorts of wrong. So that's got to be, oh, whoopsie, I didn't mean to do that. I just want that one to be green. Which means this now must continue, which means this square must be green. This must continue. Look at this. The whole of this top bit now is forced. It's got to do, all of those squares have to be green. And presumably this is what's going to tell us how this works. So now one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a six or a seven. Um, no, no, yeah, got it. Okay, so let's imagine that the snake goes here. Why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem now for this cage. The logic in this is just gorgeous. It really is such a clever puzzle. And, and I would hasten to add that I think this puzzle form has, you know, has longevity because this, this is just so fun to solve that if there was another one of these, it would be, you know, it would be very welcome. But let's look. These three squares now have to add up to this one. Well, one thing we would know is that it would have to be a one in one of those squares to add up to six in three cells or seven in three cells. It's either going to need to be one, two, three or one, two, four. It, can be, it can't be any of those. So this is impossible. This must be green. That must be purple. And this is now fixed to be seven. And that means that's not seven. And that means that, what does that mean?
right let's have a quick look at this uh, this shape because this has only got one shaded cell in it so these three squares have to equal this square now what we can't do look this time is put two three four into those squares because that will break this one so there must be a one in here which I don't actually think is terribly helpful um, okay so we're gonna have to look somewhere else can we see anything easy the answer is no oh yes I can yes I can let's come back to this because now those three squares have to equal this square without using one so this is this two three four thing again so that's two three four you can see that's going to have to be three that's a two four pair and this is a nine and now one of those three squares is a nine and one thing we can say for sure about that one is it's not those if these are nine nine plus whatever we put in the other two cells that are green is going to break this total and make it a double digit total so we remove the nine from there place a nine here this this nine total is either one two six or oh this is gorgeous right it's either one two six or one three five well i can't put i can't put five in here just by Sudoku I can't so this must be one two six I think um, so let's put one two six in if this is one two six this has become a three these two squares include a one so cannot be adding up to ten so this is now a six this must be a one eight pair that means that square is neither this square has to be seven and that's oh, this is this is all getting fixed I think one eight here uh, sorry let's just get rid of the ones in the corners this three is giving me a three and a four the four is giving me a four and a two this square now is not two or six that's got to be a one this is a two six pair this one is fixing the one and the eight um, I need an eight in this column it's got to go there And what does this column need? It needs to be five, it needs to fives and sevens, doesn't it? So that should be a seven, that's a five, that's a five, and that should be a six. Let's just check this cage, it's beautiful. So we've got 13 there, 13 there, it's working. Now this needs to be a four eight pair by Sudoku, which I don't know if we can do that yet. We can get rid of the ones in there, they don't belong there anymore and the bottom well the last three columns are now doing we're doing better with those than we were before and we have to look somewhere else for more joy um where shall we find more joy now we shall as a i can see ones twos and fours are a little bit interesting in this box that we've got to put ones twos and fours in that that region not sure if that is useful or not um, hmm. okay where do we look now does anyone have any good ideas we should I don't know we should look at Do we know enough about this? I'm wondering about this Z pentomino. Um, this, yeah, okay. What we learned from this pentomino earlier is that it's never possible to split a five cell cage in this puzzle into four of one color and one of another. So if we look here, at least one of those two squares must be purple now does that mean this has to come up here or not if this came over to there yes it does it does if if we know one of these is purple because of the logic on this cage now if this doesn't turn up immediately and comes to this cell look what happened how do we now get here 
How do we get to this square? We can't. It's impossible. We're, we're going to have to do that, that, and now we've touched the snake. So this, this won't work. This square's got to be green and it's got to turn up. Which means that must be green, otherwise the snake will touch itself. Right, and now this cannot turn, because if this turns, what will happen to the snake? It will completely fill this cage, which will break the parity considerations. So it mustn't do that. It must just connect to its friend at the top. Those two squares turn green. OK. We, I think we're getting there. Um, what do we put in this square then? What, what are the options for that square? That square sees a lot of numbers. So just by Sudoku, we're looking at 1, 2, 4 and 8, I think, into that square. Well, it clearly can't be 8 and it clearly can't be 1. It already sees 2. So this is 2 or 4. Oh, this is, yeah, so it's 4 because it sees 2. But whatever this, wherever this goes on its journey, for its next cell, it will either go here or here and make the count three. So two is just not possible. That's a four, which means there's no four in those squares. And does that mean anything useful? It might do. Not sure. Um, surely this is now fixed, isn't it, somehow? don't know is the answer it's really it's it's a beautiful puzzle but it's very hard as I said before to know where to look next so if we think about how this four is going to get fulfilled if this turns in and does that that would seem to work if it doesn't turn in it would have to go here and it counts then it's at a count of three and then it could go there and there even actually, or maybe it could do that. Oh, good grief. Right. Okay. So we, I don't know at all what this does. That's very, very strange. Um, maybe, maybe I've not done enough Sudoku here and there's some magic Sudoku bullet we can fire at this and learn some more secrets from I don't I mean I know those two squares have to equal that square but that's not very useful maybe the middle cage I know more about that I know I've got five in the middle now ah okay yes Let's think about the middle cage, because if I've got five in the middle, I know the cage sums to 40, but I know that the, the unshaded and the shaded cells must match, so they must each add to 20. Now, that means those three squares have got to add up to 20. So do they include a nine? And the answer is yes, because if they didn't include a nine, they would have to be five, seven and eight, which they can't be because of this five sitting in the middle. So there is a nine in one of those three squares, which is actually in the middle row. So nine up here is in one of two cells, which might not. Oh, no, it is. That is useful. You can't put nine there. Because nine will have to add to a positive digit there. And now this would have to be a double digit number. Good grief. Right. So we can get rid of nine from there. Nine goes here. Oh, and then it dies, does it? Maybe. Um, nine is then in one of those two cells. This column needs five, six, seven and eight to complete it. Well, that's nice because that square sees five, six and seven. So that's an eight which seems to mean that's a five. So these are a six, seven pair. Eight, no, five. Ah, five here, goodness, I hadn't spotted that. Five and eight go into the bottom of the grid. Five goes here. Five, one, two, three, four. We've done the fives. 
we've now got um well, I'm not sure what we've got but we're slowly getting there maybe um got this nine now I'm holding on to this nine what's this nine telling me three has to be oh aha uh -huh. three has to be in a cage here well immediately I'm looking at the six thinking how does that work because if you put three in there with a six you have to put another three in so there's no way this is a six that's a seven that's a six that must be a three four pair so this is now a one through the medium of the cage, that's become a four, therefore. This is a one nine pair. Don't think there's anything looking at that, but that's probably wrong. Um, four has to be in that cage. If that's three, four, this has got to be two, eight. And suddenly, actually, now, now there must be a two in one of those two cells. nine I need those three to add up to 20 so I've got nine so I need the other two squares to add up to 11 without being two nine or five six so they're three eight or four seven um, not sure if I can resolve that might come back to that if I can't see anything better in a second but look I've got quite a lot done in this column I need ones and sixes to complete Yes. Okay, where does one go in the column? It must go here. So that's a one, that's a six. There's no one in these squares anymore. And this column needs two, seven, and nine. Oh, okay, I don't think I can resolve that, can I? I've got two, seven, and nine. That's not two, that's not nine, and that's not seven. And I still don't know what this count is do I this is weird it must be virtually done um, ah yeah okay now let's have a look at this that's that can't be nine can it because no cool this is it's really clever again though if this is nine how do we make the the, the parity work within this cage because we those three together, it doesn't matter what I put in there, definitely don't add up to nine. So if this is nine, I've got to add at least one of the other digits to this nine, such that the other two digits, or three digits, or one digit, add up to that total. Well, I can't do it. If this is nine, let's say I add this one in. That would mean those two have to add to ten. Well, that's not possible, and that's as close as I'm going to get. If I try and add the two in from there, I'm, I'm looking at a five opposite. So this is a two. And if that's a two, you can see what this is going to do. It gives me these three digits. And now I've got the challenge. Yeah, so now, 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 how does the seven ever work here? The seven must be on its own versus a one, two, four. And now because we know the parity of the two, we know that the one and the four are green. Therefore, we know the seven is purple. Therefore, we know that three is green. And we are off and running again now. One, yeah, so that's now closed the loop. And there we've got it. Our Ouroboros is complete. Our snake has not touched itself. And we have lived cleanly for the last 53 minutes. That makes a change. Now, here we go. What have we got there? We've got seven and eight. That's got, oh, goodness me. I didn't mean to do that. I just wanted to put an eight into the square. Eight, seven. Um, one, three, and nine into those positions, which we, we've now got a one, nine pair in that column. I can see that, so that's probably useful. And those squares are two, four, and six, which is lovely. That's a, that's a six, therefore, because of the two, four pair. Um, okay, so, so can we... I'm wondering if we can use this cage to work out things now. In fact, this is, yeah, this is a good question because if this is a two, 
those two green cells would add to seven and you can see that those are going to swamp it very quickly so this must be four this must be two we're looking towards a total of nine we've got to add one to that to make the purples work that gives us the nine gives us the three this nine therefore bounces back into the bottom of the grid gives us those that's a nine now by sudoku um now i need what do i need down here threes and sevens yes i can do that threes and sevens go in threes and fours go in hopefully those are what are they two and six yeah i can do that as well that's a six that's a two um yeah and now those squares are one four and eight which places the one at the top four eight here uh, oh, this six is seeing that one, six and two, two and eight, deadly pattern remaining, which, uh, oh, it's going to be resolved by the parity of this box. That's a lovely finish. So how did this work? We needed these greens to add up to 20. So if this is a four, that will work. Those three will add up to 20. So that's how that finishes off. Four, four, eight, eight. Whoops. Ah, wow. There we go, done it. Um, now, let me just stare. I filled in all the digits. I have a very, very chaste snake and I will click tick. Ah, and it's done, fantastic. That is a fabulous, fabulous puzzle. That, I mean, it's hard to know where to start in summing up how brilliant that was because what I think is so impressive about it is that the logic that zeta math has used it's all different so there's sort of this snake logic going on there's parity logic going on and there's normal sudoku going on and at any one point you don't know which logic you're going to be looking for next and it just hangs together so well i mean it's incredibly impressive that's one of the i mean it's one of the finest examples of setting um it's, it's just it's like, a, he, you know, he's a peacock and he's just unfurled his feathers just to set to blind us with the brilliance. It really is. Uh, it's tremendous, tremendous. Um, let me know how you got on. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.